Our guest for today's episode is Aditya Srivastava. He is graduating from Symbiosis International University in UX Design. He is a product design intern at Hotstar and has previously interned at a SaaS company called Artifacia. I am Mayank Khandelwal and you are listening to Whiteboard.fm. Hey Aditya, what's up? Hey, how are you? Doing good. Good bro. So Aditya, how did you get started into design? So, the same old story, like you good with the academics and then it's like you have two choices in India. Usually when you hail from a small town or something like that, either you pick up engineering and or you go for medical. It's the same thing. I never I was good with art and all and never knew that design could be a career choice. It was quite late I started preparing for engineering and then then I realized it, I would say it was by a stroke of luck or maybe because I was in contact with people, a few people who were doing great in design who thought that who who could pick me up like in a sense that uh, this guy could do something good in design and then in a way I thought like uh, my parents were very supportive from day one so they were, they were fine when I told that I think if there's a course a four-year course where you can get a degree in design it's better than going for engineering where I'll be spending my four years into learning something and then maybe deciding four years later what to venture out in so it was like a I won't say it was something very planned out but still much more planned out when you see the career path of other designers who usually turn after engineering or something like that okay if I'm good in that I'll just go through this and then but I enrolled into college which provided best of design and then yeah UX was an up-and-coming field it still involves much before than that and then yeah slowly things got better that's, that's great man so can you tell us more about what was your first project like the first ever design project mm, yeah i think that would be something i'll have to think which was the first one uh when you come from like i was doing a lot of math and science so you know how preparation for engineering is and when you land up in a design college it's more like a you you start buying poster paints and you start theory of colors art and design and things like fundamental uh, fundamentals of design so like it was quite a change and for the first year i didn't even have an access to a computer which might be a very strange thing to hear as a designer like you are in a design college but for our first year was mostly towards form structure studies and also that was a quite a relief from what i was coming from in a sense so it was good and then slowly i realized like there were people talking about photoshop and then you know i think everyone has that have had the moment of realization when they realized like there's a way i can earn money through internet and then that struck over me and the epiphany moment and then i slowly started going into all those sites these like there are freelancing sites where there's contest and then you bid but yeah you know how the reality is that the people ready to do things for less than five million and that's a completely normal thing the completely different topic i won't go there but then what i realized like while i was trying to get you know that like maybe i'll join some contest try to run in and then see if i could win that uh, that see that faint glim of hope that you might win is a very big driving force slowly i was doing that i became good in the software and all but it was very clear very soon that this won't work i was maybe taming the algorithm of those sites i must be earning a little uh, to substantiate my food and the daily needs but that was not something which might be a long term solution which might add to my portfolio or would make me better as a designer started the other road tried finding out people the good thing about my college where i used to study like i still live there so symbiosis it has a very entrepreneurial uh, and it's always been a place where people venture out there uh, start up in the college in around campus so there were lots of collaborations i got some clients started like real world project which i could put in my portfolio in the sense and not just for making money at so yeah and then it slowly built upon clients then friends of clients and then you know how the network goes so something like that but then to pick up the first design project it would be something very small a logo design project somewhere but then yeah can you share one of your freelance projects and talk about some yeah, one of them 
Okay, yeah, sure. So this was a freelance project I did. It must be around two years back. When this was complete, like um, revamp, branding revamp. There was a law firm set for lawyers in Texas. They wanted a complete revamp in the branding, from the logo design to the complete brand guidelines to the UI. And for law firms, they were like more towards. Uh, sophisticated kind of law firm where they had very eight year clients and also they wanted a very minimalistic style and something and a lot of times you need to know what the client wants in a sense in a way like they are already have a very distinct vision of what they want and they're trying to channel that through you so uh, complete UI revamp had them make their website some interactions and all and then I even made the brand guidelines and as for law firms, there's a kind of a limit as to how much they can advertise. There's a, there's a thin line of, I would say, advertisement and propagation, what they do. So kind of complete graphic design plus UI projects, maybe on social media, how this would go into other collaterals and all. This was a recent and more recent, I would say something like uh, Preflet is the company in Lisbon. They've uh, been a long term collaborator with them. So it's more like they came up with the idea, and I was the first designer there. So, right from branding to making the design language to logo to the illustrations for use cases to the pitch deck and everything. So, it's more like these are some use cases study. So, the good thing about when you know what you're good with, so like every designer, in a sense, they know what their strengths are. So I know I've been a trained fine artist in the sense so I try to leverage that into illustration and then maybe upsell my skills as a UI and UX designer. So that's a very good thing I learned over the time to stay in the freelance market. And then these are some of the illustrations I made for them. There are lots of more like uh, in the in the website. And that's a very empowering feeling when you see something out of your computer going into their website. That's really great, man. So what's your approach whenever you get a freelance project? How do you get a freelance project? And also once you get one, what is your approach in solving the problem? Okay. So yeah, as I said, mostly you, uh, it depends on what like the person, whoever the client is approaching you. They, this is from my experience, what I've seen that they already have a a very distinct vision as to what they want. Usually they know what they want, but they can't generalize it through their, like they don't either have the resources or they don't have the skills to. So sometimes they say, these are competitors, you want something like that, but not very similar to them. You need to know how to find that perfect balance where you're not trying to uh, completely copy the uh, what they want. Like they would say things like inspiration and benchmarking, but in the end, you know what they want. They, they have a vision. So, and the next thing is you need to know how well you can market yourself in the sense, sometimes they also don't know, they see you as a designer, but they don't know the complete skill set, what you can bring on the table. Sometimes they might approach you for a simple logo design job, but you can educate them and that's the role of a designer to give them a complete understanding as to what is branding, how you can provide other services and create a, like, a better brand recall for their company or similarly for maybe they might just want a landing page, but you can upsell and create a complete, maybe a home page and a, <laughs> maybe a website or the dashboard or whatever the product is. So that's why, but you need to be very clear as to what the vision is, what the expectations is. And this, I learned the hard way in a way, like sometimes I would see it as something that would go in my portfolio and they would want something that would be good for the business. So you need to know how to find that balance over the time you, get an understanding how to bring that balance in your work. Nice. That's really insightful. So uh, Aditya, how did you get into Hotstar? So how did you apply for it? How did you apply for it and uh, how did you get in? What was the process? Okay. So uh, college curriculum, it allows us to do a six month internship, six, four to six month internship in the end. So like, like 20 weeks, but yeah. So the thing is like, uh, it will, you know how the process is like. You can apply through the careers pages and all, but in India, design is still at a very not I would say rudimentary state, but 
in all senses like there's not a, there's a very rare chance that you might apply for a career page you'll get notice your resume but get shot it's a long process and when you are in a need where you want to intern at a place of your choice and which can be like the choice can depend on a lot of things like the people the the type of the industry the domain they work in so i knew i wanted to be into a consumer centric company because i had good experience with freelancing and doing uh, like collaborations with small startups in the sense like where they are just like one or two designers or one or two companies but not something which was in b2c or a big consumer centric company so i picked up hotstar and a few other companies started cold emailing people there i won't say cold email but then yeah you have to get their touch like in the sense why you want to be there but then yeah it's a process like it's a given take thing so i started applying in the sense i tried to reach them out on linkedin on the designers i would say the designers i knew i would follow them for a long time so i knew these are the places i want to be where i could get some good mentorship so on hot side reach to the head of design there gaurav joshi he replied he picked up like he we had a brief interaction over a call he saw my portfolio like he even picked up a few mistakes like then that was a very important realization there that he, there can be something in your portfolio which you did in 2016 maybe which had something which was a trend then or maybe you were very rookie designer then but that can't be a justification as to why it's still on your portfolio so uh, i thought my chance is gone there but then yeah he scheduled an he scheduled an interview then the next thing was i quickly went through my portfolio so whatever was there if anything from small type typography mistake or a color choice which was which might be risky i changed it and then i wanted to put my best foot forward so uh, there was an interview then i had my first round of interview with the product designer there and it was a long discussion about my project i won't say it was an interview so more more, more sort of an interaction where they went through the case study like a complete case study and then it was not a one way talk there were questions there were answers and then can you share that, the case study and the answer. questions that were asked uh yeah i think like uh, i showed you i showed them the course, my existing portfolio so this was some of the case studies i've written like this was some of i would uh, complete college curriculum some were taken out from college and maybe extended later so these are some of the case studies i've done so i if you distinctly remember it was this one i shared and then this was done in college and then i took it out as you know when college there are a lot of restrictions but then you always have scope to go ahead and do things so this was a case study uh, it's more towards uh, the complete and uh, like this is giving you an overview so it was a you uh, complete ux process behind designing the choice based gameplay so that's the end product but the problem which i was trying to solve so the user research behind that and the complete ux designing process which i followed there were things like uh, like if i had my objective set there were questions on why i chose this and why this was a relevant problem or not and the results and insights and how valid those results and insights were how substantial they were in the in relation with what i came up with as a solution in that sense problem state and like and then the complete so in a way it was a test of how well i understood the ux process and how well i could communicate what i have done because that's two parts sometimes you're very good at doing things but you're not good at communicating equally well what you have been thinking or what you've been doing so this uh, like this is the complete case study so the scenarios the competitive analysis the ideations and the complete task analysis in that sense and then yeah it's a long process the complete process driven thing prototyping and testing so like yeah there was discussion on this that's it i think that's really nice man so also while you are sharing your portfolio your case studies look really in depth right so can you share what planning uh, or what thought process you followed while creating your portfolio okay yeah that's very interesting actually because uh, 
a lot of the time, I like the ideal case for a portfolio should be for youth designer website. But when you are at this age, when every six months you you don't know what your next six months would be like, like what for maybe like six months back or maybe I would say one year back, I was more interested in finding more clients for making some more projects or making some more money as freelancer. But now the scope completely changed for me and now I was like the last six months I was looking for internships and so then there's so much of a change happening when in your long term and short long term goals more or less remain the same, but the short term goals are very I would say fluid. So the website didn't serve a purpose for me there and I and website is like your personal space on internet. You and that's on the bucket list of every other design. I feel like they want some time and then it's always stay on the bucket list. I'll make my website and you don't want to be something like it's half big thing out there. So and the other option remains like Behance and the we like other dribble and Behance as such. Like I'll just show you my Behance portfolio there. So it's more like I feel the platform is very lacking in the sense there's no way you can have in-depth UX case studies or UX process driven things here. It's more of a visual platform also, but then you can't be a designer and don't have, and you don't have a portfolio because like the, uh, a lot of people, they would want to see your behind. That's the first thing they see when you know you're applying for a behind, uh, you're applying for a design post. So I thought that a better way could be to, if I chunk out my portfolios into pieces, so Behance, I completely kept it as a visual portfolio where you'll find things like illustrations to fine art things to digital paintings or even sometimes like uh, data visualization, motion graphics, logo design, some photography, but it can't serve as a a UX portfolio for that you need to show your process. Also in the early stage, I would say it's important to show the process. Maybe if you're applying for a bigger role or like a senior role, you don't need to show your process. You need to show how your products impacted, like what was the churn or that whatever, like the metrics, whatever metrics it held out or whatever that is. But for a young designer like me, serve like behind didn't serve that purpose there. So I thought that medium could be a solution there where I could sh sh completely show the process in detail. It might become very long, but then I tried to keep it as a short and simple, like a tweet storm in a sense, like you can have photo and uh, 20 character thing, then again a photo or some bullet points in the sense, and then like results and and focusing more on what you found out rather than how you and that serves the purpose also yeah Aditya you've, you're you graduating from a design college right you're doing a design degree yeah. so when you come across or work with other self-taught designers or designers who do not have a design education background what are the differences that you've mm -hmm. come across or what are yeah what is your experience yeah, uh, that's a very interesting question. Actually, that's a very big topic these days. Like, does a design degree matter, or like the pe people who would say they won't want to work with people who have a design degree, which is actually very evident, which is not a wrong hypothesis actually. Because what I notice, a lot of people in design colleges, they come with a sense of an entitlement that we are already in a design college, so the future is set. So, and and they're not in that sense. They know like they when you are trying to achieve something which you're not like maybe you uh, how do I put it in a sense like when you are maybe in other college you're trying to shift your field so you are naturally inclined to work more because you are at uh, you are at, at a competition with people who would get it naturally so I never looked at design college as something which is entitled to me and that's important because the day you think you are entitled to something because you are at a place and that is something like you that would not make you push yourself harder for working out for things which is very important when design college it helps in the sense it helps you to know what to study but then it won't help you how well you study it might tell you in third year you'll have a course of interaction design but that doesn't stop you from learning that in your second year and practicing it by your third year so you need to know that if you are taking it as a for granted thing that you are in a design college and 
and you'll get things on your plate then you are losing a lot of you you're being foolish there and and from my interaction with a lot of people from self proud designers to people who like from who have come from design college i don't see a difference after a few years or maybe like i never think the degree the like course or whatever college you come from it matters because the best designers i don't think they went to the best design schools anyway like the generalization i'm saying but then in design it doesn't matter it's more of your work it's more of your portfolio and everyone's saying that so i never felt that i missed something or i would miss something if i won't go to a design school or i have something extra if i went to a design school it's a very subjective thing but yeah i feel after a few years it totally vanishes out from where you come from well said well said also aditya how the design can you share more about how the design culture at hostar is and more about the team uh, from day one i yeah from day one i would say i never felt like an intern there i was part of a team and then the good thing about design like there are around 10 designers in the product design team and and the good thing is like they are very well connected each one of us knows what each everyone is doing and then we know like we get feedback from each other and from i never felt like i was being to something or something like i was being overwhelmed and thing but they were always support they were like everyone was always supportive even when they are very busy in current times when there's a lot of things happening the cycle come in the business plus launch so there is a busy time but then they had time for me to go and ask like any any time if i go and ask there were a lot of things when you need clarification you, it's good to clarify things unless there are bigger implications later so yeah it's a very open culture this ownership this good sense of accountability with what you're doing this very cl- this this good clarity with why you are doing what you're doing and overall i would say it's a very good place to be as a designer lots of mentorship for young designers like me for people to learn from not only from designers product managers as a first you get to know what others are working from working on and the like a good place to learn and grow in the early years i would say for me at least it has turned out to be can you share one of your projects that you worked on and your experience i like uh, usually my work involved working on since like uh, most of the disney plus stuff which is in was like in the roll out currently which will come soon so uh, my work was towards the uh, a lot of platforms in fact hostel is one of the few apps which comes from your mobile screen to your tv so there was like a very good experience to work on the tv screens and to see, see how the 10 foot ui works and to see everything in practice there and then there were like more ui ux experience in like uh, ui changes and can't sh- as such like share the files for such but then yeah the overall Anyone idea I think all, get. Uh, which members from the team were you working with uh usually uh there were like product designers so i have worked in the core part so there's, a, mm-hmm, there's, there's like interaction designers god so she's the head of design there so he's guy there for me for the mentor here then the other designers as well so that sense like it's more of a collaborative effort with everyone there and based on the project which i was working on at that time the different designers yeah that's nice also you interned at artificia so is there any work or like any project that you can share and talk about us so last summer i interned at artificia and it was a really good experience i would say there because the kind of atmosphere there it's a, it was a small smaller startup compared to what i'm right now but the team was very uh, well connected the close knit things i worked very closely with the ceo the navneet sharma who turned out to be a great mentor for me right now and we are collaborating on other projects as well so at that time we were working on a dashboard where the it was a shopify app it was a good project because i had the opportunity to interact with the merchants like it was, it was a b2b product so it was completely different like different experience compared to what time here with the b2c product where there's more of data like quantitative data turned into insights there it was more of qualitative data where you go and take interviews with a lot of customers so i interviewed with a lot of customers what their intentions like what their aspirations for this passion 
product and how they seem to use it and then i try to use them like try to find out the patterns and make these insights into like the complete ux process how it is to make it into a product so and overall it went into development so it dashboard kind of product it might not seem very especially appealing but there's always a very good scope to bring in elements of uh, visual and that's how i tried to pitch in so that was the time when i said like this is good scope i can bring in my skills of rebranding and uh, visual skills so i got a green flag there and then i rebranded the company and it was a good So when you joining a company the logo is different you got what the logo is different and everything is a visual language is something you have designed that's a very good thing to work on that's really nice man also so if some if i had to ask you what are your top 3 learnings from your experience at hotstar mm, yeah okay so the first learning i would say is that from my previous experiences i said it was more of a freelancing stuff for working in b2b startups but then no b2b startups but small scale startup which turned out to be b2b for some reason but then you are the first designer the only designer so you get the sense of belief that you can do things alone but that's very wrong in the sense when you think that you are the only one or like you can do from you think from end to end then you are missing out a lot of parts So the first thing here I learned was to collaborate between people. So important. It was important to not only to share files, but sometimes you might be working on something and then someone else will continue. So from After Effects files to sketch files to everything. So naming them, putting like proper nomenclature, using the right kind of layer names to everything. So that. and her thing is like we overestimate our ability to remember things so you might want to go back into something which you did 3 months ago and you won't even remember what the name of the file was or how you did that especially happens if you're working with a lot of animations and after effect lotty files and all so that was an important thing i realized like some um, you need to be at your go so like even if somebody calls and they want to see your file or access it you can tell them it's there it's there and you can the other person can help without minimum human with minimum human intervention from your end the second thing i would say was more like and with the current coronavirus thing and everything like we are moving into work from home or the remote things so it's very important to over communicate sometimes or be very clear the quote was confucius is like one who asks is fool for one minute one who doesn't is fool for life so you can be a fool for one minute it doesn't matter but if you make a mistake you think that i might be taken as a fool or something how i didn't know but it's good to ask good to ask a lot of questions third thing i would say it's like it's got to interact more as a as an as proclaimed introvert who doesn't talk much unless something or someone really needs to talk to me i would say i found it really difficult to create empathy for people from other domains in the sense like people from product management backgrounds or the developers to want that it. it was more of a mystery as to how things turned out to be but now when i see i saw my designs turning into like developed products and all so it is like there has to be a process and like there's a one to one interaction a lot of one to one interactions between people you build relationships the relationships there there can be something like a very important business decision or a very important product management point of scope of kind of thing which led to this kind of a us and maybe they are going to change it later so it you develop empathy that you don't see everything from a designer's lens but you create a bird eye view where you can see things from a larger perspective and that's that's really nice like you've learned a lot what are some of the things you're really excited about right now in the design industry over the past six months i felt an empathy of i was in close contact with people i would say who were who uh, like not it it was might be i started noticing more or maybe it was just like when you know since you start noticing more like a lot of people who are not who don't have english as their first language or who can't understand english so it's so all like there's a great scope to design for the the like what we call bharat like next billion users in india and everywhere like a lot of times i have this discussion with my mentor like also that a lot of the products in the west are just old products with a better ux but in india this so many india or other emerging economies this is something which i find really interesting i feel that we are 
and the peak of something very revolutionary, revolutionary, which is going to happen through getting all these people on internet and making them access this app. So we are at that phase, and that excites me a lot as to what the future holds for us. And I want to be a part there. I feel that's very interesting. Thanks for doing the interview, and it's been great knowing your story. Thank you, thank you. Uh, it's been great to talk to you also. Uh, I hope like we stay connected and create more interactions like this. Definitely, yeah. Aditya. Yeah. Thanks for listening to this episode and I hope you liked it. To check out other episodes and clips from the interview, subscribe to the whiteboard.fm YouTube channel. Feel free to share your favorite parts of the interview and don't forget to tag us. This podcast is a part of the 10K Designers Network. You can check out other projects on 10kdesigners.com.